What is going on, Internet? My name is Lou, and I make Linux videos. So tonight, uh, we're going to be talking about tips and tricks in Linux Mint 16. So Linux Mint 16 has just been released. You've got your shiny new operating system installed. And because you're a Linux user, now you can start tinkering and tweaking with everything to your heart's content. So I decided to put this tips and tricks video together because I believe that um, I'm going to show you guys a number of optimizations um, and tricks, if you will, um, that you can apply to your system that's going to make your experience that much better. Now tonight I decided to make the first video topic on solid state drives. Now for those of you who have been subscribed to me for a long time and usually watch my content, you know that um, I made a SSD video on how to optimize SSDs in Linux a while ago. Now for a lot of my new subscribers that actually don't view my back catalog, you may have missed this. I've decided to go over this because solid state drives are more and more common, especially for laptop and ultrabook users. And I believe that they're going to be kind of the de facto drive for most, um, for most systems that you're going to buy in a big box store going on into the future. So I think these tips are going to really help any of you that are using SSDs. Now, some of you may be brand new to Linux. Others may be intermediate to advanced users, but I feel like these tips and tricks uh, are going to be able to shed some light on any level of Linux user. So I hope you guys enjoy. Now, we're going to be doing two things tonight in this video. First, we're going to be adding a few options to our FSTAB file to enable things like trim support and some other advanced features for solid state drives. And we're also going to be changing the IO scheduler in the kernel. Now, these seem like super complicated things, but when you see how easy it is, um, you're going to be pretty blown away. Now, all of the things that we're going to be doing tonight, um, you can prove with benchmark tests um, that they're going to not only increase the performance of your solid state drive, but they're also going to extend the life and longevity of the drive itself. So I think these things are really crucially and vitally important um, if you're a solid state or an SSD uh, user. So we're going to head over to the Arch Linux Wiki, because I believe that uh, the Arch Linux, Linux Wiki has some amazing documentation about solid state drives in Linux. And we're going to look first and foremost at the no A time flag. So the, what is the no A time flag? Using this flag one's in one's uh, FSTAB file halts the logging of read accesses to the file system via an update to the A time information associated with the file. Um, the importance of the no A time setting is that it eliminates the need by the system to make writes to the system um, for files which are simply being read, which writes can be somewhat expensive as mentioned in previous section. This can result in measurable performance gains. If you're a new Linux user and your head's spinning, don't worry, okay? Just know that adding this option is going to make your solid state drive perform better. That's all you need to know. All right, now the next thing that we're going to be talking about is discard. So the discard option enables trim support for your solid state drive. Um, most SSDs support the add a trim command for sustained long-term performance and wear leveling. For more, in, uh, for more, including some before and after benchmarks, see this tutorial. So discard is going to uh, allow trim support for your solid state drive. Um, trim support also with file systems like ButterFS that can take snapshots of your system and allow you to restore back to them um, will enable that as well. So that's what discard does. Now one of the other things that we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding a mount option uh, in our FSTAB file. Uh, commit equals 600. Now basically what we're going to do is we're going to use a RAM disk. Um, now, uh, using uh, use of a RAM disk can stop constantly changing files from hitting on the SSD. Uh, it may hit SSD via swap. RAM disk configuration may be performed via um, a mount option. So, they give you another um, bunch of options here uh, how to, to use a RAM disk, but we can do it using a mount option in our, in our uh, FSTEP file, which is what we're going to do here. So, with all that said, again, if any of that scared you as a new Linux user, don't let it. Um, just know that this is going to improve the performance of your SSD. So let's get to it. Now, what we're going to want to do is open up a terminal. Now, again, you see terminal, don't freak out, okay? And let's do this. 
that shortcut doesn't work. All right, we're going to type sudo gedit forward slash etsy forward slash fstab. Hit enter. Now we're going to supply our password. OK, here is your uh, fstab file. Now, I've already added these options to mine, so yours is going to look a little bit different. I'm going to explain a couple of things here. In no matter how your partitioning scheme is set up, whether it was done automatically or in manual mode, you're always going to have your root file system. Okay, now root is indicated by just a forward slash, which you're going to see right here. So uh, in this particular case, I use the ext4 file system, and I added these three uh, mounting options: discard, no a time, and commit equals 600. Um, I also use a boot partition. Some of you may not have this. If you do, you're going to add the same three options here. And most of you should also have a swap partition. Okay, So um, you're going to add this option here at the end. After the SW comma, you're going to, you're going to um, type out discard. One thing to note, um, make sure that you keep all the spacing the same. Everything should line up. And you're separating these things with a comma. Discard, comma. No wait time, comma. Commit equals 600, comma. And then these should be the default options that were set up uh, during the installation for this particular mount point. So I'm going to uh, put up an image on the screen now um, of what you'll be adding and the command to actually open up your, um, uh, to open up gedit here. Uh, you can actually use Nano, you can use Vim to do this as well, um, but for all intents and purposes, I think using a text editor like gedit will probably be a little bit more um, user friendly, especially if you're a new Linux user. So we're going to add all those options, you're going to hit save, and you're going to close the file. That's it. <laughs> That's it. All of those crazy, complicated things I just described, um, you just added them to that one file, and now all of those great options are going to be added to your solid state drive. Now, I also talked about doing something to your I.O. scheduler, which is um, determines the reads for your drive. Um, and there's different schedulers in the Linux kernel, one of which that's optimized for solid state drives would be the Noop I.O. scheduler. So just know that it's optimized for um, flash memory or solid state drives. How we're going to change this, and there's a few different ways, we're going to add a kernel parameter, okay? And the way that you do that here in Linux Mint is fairly simple. So what we're going to do is, again, we're going to use gedit. We're going to type sudo gedit forward slash etsy forward slash default forward slash grub. Okay. So this is the file, your default grub file. Anytime your kernel is updated, um, it's going to refresh this particular grub file with the new kernel entry. So as you can see right here, this particular line that says grub command line Linux default equals, it should just say quiet um, parenthesis, quiet splash parenthesis to add the um, elevator option for the new bio scheduler. All you're going to do is space right after quiet splash and add in elevator equals noop, and then you should have a closing parenthesis. What you're going to do is you're going to save the file after you do that, come back over here to uh, your terminal, and you're going to type the following sudo update dash grub. Now, what it's going to do is it's going to update your grub uh, file. And um, it's going to add that elevator option in. Okay, so if you don't do update grub at the end, it's not going to register that elevator option um, to set the noop I/O scheduler uh, during the boot process. So you want to really make sure that you update the grub at the end. So these few tips and tricks are going to greatly increase the performance of your solid state drive in your new Linux Mint 16 system. I hope you guys like this video. If so, give it a thumbs up. Make sure to share it on Google Plus and on Twitter. Um, and consider subscribing to my channel for more tips and tricks on your new Linux Mint 16 system and other Linux-related content. I appreciate the support, guys. Again, um, 
If you're interested into more tips and tricks, stay tuned. Until the next video, we'll see you guys later.